she didn't have to say I was a black belt. But thank you. Um, I feel really lucky to be a part of this uh, organization, Foundation for Healthy Generations. Um, I think I'm in my eighth month, and I've already learned so much. So thank you, Melanie. Um, about two months ago, I was lucky enough to be in a workshop um, facilitated by Roberto Danzi, Dr. Roberto Danzi, on cultural leadership. Walking in, I really didn't know what that meant. It's like, what is cultural leadership? As I walked out of that session, I can say I was truly changed in the way I view myself as a leader, but more so in how I see CHWs and their power as leaders in health equity. Roberto Danzi has um, a degree in cultural psychology. He's a Toltec tribe member and a cultural diversity expert with his company called Cultural Wisdom that he founded in 1998. He has dedicated his life to healing trauma with the two modalities of susto and espanto, or shock and trauma. He has been a leader in the CDC's Health Disparities Initiative and HIV Prevention Awards, and HIV Prevention, and has been the recipient of many prestigious awards, including the Cesar Chavez Award for National Migrant Education and the Mountain Medallion Award from the National Indian Health Board. Roberto is also an author for a best-selling book called Semillas de Esperanza, or The Seeds of Hope. Currently, he is working with children of undocumented or mixed-status families in migrant communities that are facing the very real trauma and fear of deportation and anti-immigrant narrative that is really real in the United States right now. And he approaches that with his very unique healing approach to trauma that's based in Native traditions. I've always been told that people might not always remember what you said, but they'll remember how you made them feel. Roberto made me feel like I was back in Mexico in my family's kitchen, minus the gossiping aunties, sharing our knowledge <laughs> and cultural wisdom. Roberto made me feel not only renewed with a renewed sense of hope, but with a renewed sense of the power we have to put hope in action. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Roberto Danzi. Thank you so much. No, I have my. Thank you so much. What a beautiful introduction. When somebody speaks so eloquently and beautifully about myself, I wish my mother was here. <laughs> so my first salute goes to all of you mothers. Yes, that's for you. <laughs> now, during the last month, even though finally my wife and I, we found a beautiful home big enough that we enjoyed to rent, we have not been there one day. <laughs> that happens. We've been in the migrant fields, and we've been going out there to see mostly the children of the communities who are exposed right now to a trauma that I have only seen when children face war. And the uh, attendance to the schools have dropped significantly. So we were very fortunate because every time that we announced that we were going to be at the school, the attendance was 100%. And that goes to the bravery of the migrant families. Now, one thing that I would say was that anybody who saw me there will get a green card. And this is my card, and it's green. <laughs> so if anybody wants a green card, I have them here in good supply. <laughs> Now, one of the things that we've been doing is the psychology of hope. And I was fortunate enough to write about the psychology of hope in 1998 in my book, Semillas de Esperanza. In it, we found that there were 60 key concepts that I hope Dr. Chan Hellman will get a chance to quantify. <laughs> this one's, they are 60 and I won't be able to cover them all in this short keynote, but I uploaded them all to the website. So you can just go to the website, and you just put Psychology of Hope, and you will see all of the 60 key factors for the Psychology of Hope. What is the website? It's www.culturalwisdom.org. Here we go again, because one just got their pen. <laughs> www.culturalwisdom.org. And there we will see 60, 
60 key categories. Now, in the limited time that we have, our studies on attention and retention of people is that most people remember three key things, and that's true. But we are here with the science of hope, and we're gonna cover not three things, but 20, <laughs> all right? And at the end, I bet you you're gonna remember all 20. And if not, you just go to the website and you will see the 60 there. <laughs> All right? So here we go. And it is lovely to be here in Seattle where you can really feel the spirit of Chief Seattle who spoke for Mother Earth. And at a time that the Maya said our time was going to be a battle between the terrestrial against the extra, no, the anti-terrestrials. The anti-terrestrials are the ones who have forgotten that the earth is alive and it's our mother. And whatever we do to her will happen to us. So let's be good to our mothers. <laughs> and that's Chief Seattle. We honor you. <laughs> Seattle is also, by the way, the city where Bruce Lee lived and where he's buried. <laughs> So we honor Bruce Lee and the Chinese wisdom. So here we go. Which are the 20 key concepts? We start with the pillars of cultural wisdom. There's four of them. And like Sesame Street, we, they are all with the letter C. Four pillars, C. And they are consciousness, conduct, culture, and community. Once again, consciousness, conduct, culture, and community. Consciousness because in hope, we know that one of the key factors for hope is the mindset that we have. It is your mindset, and there are certain things you can do in your mindset that are gonna enhance hope. Other things you can do to your mindset that can enhance Hopelessness. So there's a battle in the mind, and we're going to get into that one. So consciousness, it's so important. And it all starts with the mind. It all starts with consciousness. The second one is conduct. And conduct is how we use our power to behave in certain ways. There are certain behaviors that guarantee that you can keep the flame of hope alive. Which are those key behaviors? We will get into those. Then we have culture. And what is culture? It is the collective mindset. Not individual anymore, it is collective. And you share it with others. I can salute you in English and you will be like, yes, hello. But then I can say, buenos dias. And you're like, what's that? <laughs> now, some of you will understand. You say, buenos dias para ti también. Somebody can be walking down the street, and they can be, querida, ay, cada momento. Mírala, se te la sabes. <laughs> so she already knows the song. And everybody has a song that sustains them. In every culture, they have in common, they have made beautiful songs. Beautiful songs. Right now, our people of Korea are in certain risk. So we sing a little song for Korea, in Korean. I know you know it, but here it goes. Umaya nunaya kang byang salja nun Pajagi hinun kud morebe ti hinun pagenun kali penore humaya nunaya kang byung salja love and peace for Korea. So the culture 
has lived longer than any one of us. And every culture has left us a blueprint of what constitutes a full cycle of a human being in all of his or her stages. And we will get into that. When you know the cultures of the people you are helping, you bring that additional muscle. It was built there. It has power. The culture cures. And it is vital that we understand the cultures that have sustained us for so many generations. Last but not least, we have the sea of community. And what is community? It is where we have the collective will and power of us together. Martin Luther King Jr. could say, I may not get there, but we as the people, we will get there. So the eye of me of ego may not get there. <laughs> but us as spirit, we are gonna get there. That's the power of community. Now we're gonna go into each one of the pillars. So remember, the pillars, consciousness, conduct, culture, community. We're gonna go into which one? Consciousness. In consciousness, you can tell right now who is hopeless. Look around your table, just look at them. <laughs> they tell you with their face, yeah, this sucks. <laughs> Whenever you're trying to start a movement, look around and my God, you're gonna find few. So you wanna go with the ones who already have a little spark in their eyes. I don't know what's happening, but here we go. Yes. They have energy in high demand. So in the native traditions, energy is represented as red. That's young people. A lot of energy, like Andrea. And then the wise people, they're old. Not much energy, but a lot of wisdom. Young ones, a lot of energy, little wisdom. We need a combination of both of them. And when you form this unity, boom, the elder ones, we get charged. And the young ones, they grow in wisdom because they internalize the experience of the elders around them. The word for wisdom in the Toltec Indians is chipote. Chipote. Latinos use it all the time. It means wisdom, but it also means bump in the head. <laughs> So look into your table and you're gonna see who has the biggest bumps in the head. <laughs> the young ones, sometimes they try to hide it. The elder ones, they say, don't bother. <laughs> this is wisdom. This was my first divorce. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die, but look at me, here I am. <laughs> Incredible presence and power. So they have a positive mindset. But there are negative mindsets, and it has four characteristics, four. Negative mindset, hopelessness, and you will find them in people and in communities. Identify them because you're gonna turn them around. Which are the four negative mindsets? The first one, that the situation is a problem. And have you met people like that, that everything is a problem? They don't eat a donut because it has a hole. <laughs> oh my God, it's horrible. <laughs> They're catastrophizing everything, it's a problem. The second one, it is personal. <laughs> it always happens to me. <laughs> I left the job and here I have the same problem. <laughs> it's personalized. The third one, it is permanent. Oh, this is here, we're dead. <laughs> Nothing we can do about it. <laughs> permanent. And last but not least, pervasive. It's all over the place. It was at work, but now it's at home. <laughs> it's everywhere. So the four Ps, negative, hopelessness. What do you do in hopefulness? It's not a problem, it's a challenge. 
And if it is a challenge, we need to build some skills. And if it is a challenge, we're going to have a plan. As a matter of fact, we're going to have three different plans. A, B, and C, we're going to get there. And last but not least, we're going to have energy. We're going to be energy rich. We are going to get there. Like Nelson Mandela said, you can look at your bars or you can see through them. Orale, cabrón. <laughs> Nelson Mandela, you try to change me, the situation is so horrible, I am immune to this situation. They used to call it a prison. After 20 years of Mandela being there, they called it Mandela's University. And people will go into that prison, they just met him, and that will change their lives. You change people no matter where you are. That's a powerful thing to remember. Yes? So we turn around. It is not a problem. It is a challenge. It is not personal. It is the situation. Let's fix the situation. It is not permanent. It's going to last some time. The Maya Indians in 1452 wrote about a problem that they saw was going to be here 500 years. And the Mayas remember it. It began to end in 1992. We waited 500 years. So it's not permanent. We will overcome. And the more muscle we put into it, time will grow shorter. So it's not permanent. And last but not least, it is not pervasive. It's not everywhere. I can be in a horrible situation, but I can put beauty into my music and great love. Like Schubert, he was dying of tuberculosis and poverty and homelessness. Didn't even have his violin. It had gone to the pond. And a nice lady there, you can find them everywhere. There was a nice lady who told him, come during the lunch hour. The nasty boss leaves during the lunch. He is the corporate master. While he's gone, you come in, you can play your violin. And when he was there with his violin, he made Ave Maria. What a beautiful song. That's you. No matter how horrific the environment can get, you can create beauty and love and power, and hope, and transformation. You can do that. <laughs> so we have the power to have islands, islands where the trauma, the pain, the oppression doesn't reach us. The Native American cultures, they create sacred space. It means during the time that you are with me in this space, Everything is sacred. How do you make things sacred? You put your love in it and sacralize the place. Pásele por aquí a lo barrido. You feel welcome. If you're Mexican, aquí está tu México lindo y querido. You make them feel at home. You make them feel safe. You make them feel protected. So that's how we transform hopelessness into hopefulness in the consciousness. Four things. Now we move to conduct. Conduct. How we behave. There are four things you can do that assures you're going to enhance the power and the flame of hope. And they all start with the letter A. A. First, A, conduct, affection. Just treat somebody with affection. Notice the difference. In the war of Israel, soldiers were wounded. And when they returned wounded, they had some of them what physicians call 50-50 predicament. That means if they did surgery, they had 50% chances that they will survive but also 50% chances that they would die, a 50-50. Uh, 
there was a few psychologists, like Dr. Chan right there to mention. And they said, let's ask them some questions and find out if there's something has subjective health. We know that objectively, they have 50-50 chances of survival. But let's check their mindset. So they ask them, key question, and it goes for you. Do you have somebody in your life that shows you affection on a regular basis? This is a question for you right now. Do you have somebody that shows you affection on a regular basis? If the answer was no, even though they had 50-50 chances of survival, if the answer was no, 90% of the soldiers died. 90%. But if the answer was yes, I have somebody that shows me affection on a regular basis, nine out of 10 survived. <laughs> affection literally saves lives. So homework, when you go back home and they ask you, what did you learn in the science of hope? You tell them that you're alive because of me. <laughs> yes, I give affection. Now there's some cultures that make you really resilient and strong. Virginia Satir, the greatest family therapist of 20th century, a woman. She said that children need four hugs every day to be healthy. How many hugs? Four. And there's cultures that emphasize this. Stanford students went to Mexico, to New York and London, and they went to coffee shops and they measured how often people touch each other. They had contact and they will count one hour. That table, one hour. In Mexico, one hour, 84 times per hour. <laughs> you want to go to Mexico, you're going to be touched. <laughs> or to the migrant camps, the same thing. Mexico here. New York, 12 times. Goes way down. London, they're still waiting. <laughs> So some cultures, you're going to see them, and they're going to be like this. So if they're coming like this, don't go like this. You want to get in sync with the power of the culture. So we pay attention to these signals, conduct, affection. Second A, attention. You cannot be on your phone and paying attention to another person. <laughs> when I was little, my mom was a teenager, and I would be mama, 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 and she will only respond by the fifth time. Have you met kids like that? They're ma, 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 ma. And by the fifth time, she says, si, que quieres? And I would go, ya se me olvidó, I already forgot. When I met my grandmother, abuelita, ¿qué quieres, mijito? Grandmas. The Maya says that the hug of a grandma can take away all pain. Isn't that beautiful? So my grandma will give me attention like that. And I was like, ya se me olvidó. I forgot I was not expecting you to be so fast. And you know what she did? She didn't have a cell phone. But she did crochet. And she told me, oh, that's because you are so smart and you get so many good ideas. Let's sit down here and we will wait and it will come back to you. That's a phrase in native cultures. So when somebody loses their train of thought, you say, don't worry, it will come back to you. And within a couple of hours, it comes back. <laughs> but you show them that you are ready when they are ready. So when somebody gives you attention, your stress comes down by 20%. 20%. Yes, by giving you attention. So we have two A's out of four. Affection, attention. 
Third A, appreciation. I appreciate you. There has to be something good on somebody. I remember my uncles. I was getting in trouble in school. Fighting, screaming, and fighting. Running, screaming, and fighting. And one day, I ran into my grandma, and she told me, Roberto, by your torn shirt, I can tell you you got in a fight. And I'm like, pussy. And then she told me, by your broken lip, I can tell you you're not very good at it. <laughs> and I'm like, pues no. And she took me to a school of martial arts. You see, my uncle Pedro, my oldest uncle, he was the brightest one, but because he was the oldest one, he had to go and work in the fields. But his dream was that the younger ones, we will go and get a PhD. And Uncle Pedro will send plenty of money so that the younger generation could go all the way to college and get a PhD. And she was getting money from him, so she took a little bit extra money and put me in a school of martial arts. And what do they do in martial arts? You run, you scream, and you fight. <laughs> it was developed for kids just like me. But what they tell you in regular school, no. In martial arts, they say, yes. When you are out of place, place in Latin, you say, local, local. You have a local problem. In other words, you are loco. <laughs> The word loco, out of place. And rather than trying to drive you crazy or label you, they put you in the right environment for those things. And then in martial arts, I was screaming and running and punching, and I was exhausted. <laughs> the next day, I was in regular skill. I'm like, I have to save my voice. <laughs> I have to save my energy, and I'm not going to fight with anybody. I have black belts that I really have to fight tonight. <laughs> So I behaved beautifully in regular school. And then in another place for beating up people, they gave me trophies. <laughs> and they said, how wonderful, Roberto. And I'm like, yes, I'm not in jail. <laughs> what a beautiful thing to find that your defects are unpolished virtues. That's your defects. Don't just give him Ritalin. Have him use all of this energy. And in Indian country, they are running, running, and running hundreds of miles at a time. And you meet these kids, once they do the long distance run, it's usually at least 100 miles nonstop, they are pretty mellow for the rest of the month. <laughs> no medication. <laughs> I'm a peaceful guy. And that is because you find your appreciation. And somebody has the eyes to see the qualities in you. Last but not least, we have another A, and it is the one of acceptance. I accept you. There are some people who have internalized racism, so they hide their ethnicity. They conform, yes, to the norm. I don't make any waves, I don't speak any Spanish, no. I'm not with them. That's the trauma that they are exposed to. But if you're looking at the children who cannot hide who they are, be proud of your ethnicity and your background so that they can recognize in you and say, yes, we're okay. <laughs> we're good. We're hopeful. We're powerful. We connect you and me. There is acceptance. And if they are straight, gay, or in between, you say, I accept you. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. The way you are. What a beautiful thing. The four A's. We move into culture. Culture. The collective mindset. Eric Erickson found in the Karuk tribe, 
that they had identified the four stages of development that were universal. In the medicine wheel, they have four stages. In the east, children. In the north, teenagers. In the west, adults. And in the south, elders. Children needed to fulfill one destiny. And all four destinies start with the letter L. They needed to live their life to the fullest. Want to heal a child, give them their childhood back. That's what we do. And it's never too late to have a good childhood. Go to Walt Disney. <laughs> Disney World. The majority of people there are not children, they are adults. <laughs> but their inner child is coming out. <laughs> they want to live. And they have a little kid there, and the little kid is usually saying, no more, no more. <laughs> and the grown-up is like, one more, one more, come on, one more. <laughs> and they take them all the way. Because they want to live. And live to your fullest. The second destiny, north, teenagers, to learn. They must learn. They must have a vision. They go on a vision quest and they're going to transform themselves. When you are in the east and you're a small child, you laugh 400 times per day. Small children. You tell them the same joke. <laughs> Teenagers, they don't laugh 400 times. They only laugh 20. <laughs> and those of you who have teenagers, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you tell them the joke again, they say, I heard that one before. <laughs> so we have to help the people in North. <laughs> That's usually where they get lost. Mexican people, when they get lost, they say, Menortie. <laughs> I was going North. So we have to have protection for our young people. To live, to learn, and in the west where the sun sets is to love. To love. And when you love, we say you have to practice the diamond rule. And what is the diamond rule? It's opposite to the golden rule. The golden rule says treat others like you want to be treated. That's fantastic golden rule for single people. When you are in a relationship, a lot of problems happen because you are treating them like you want to be treated. In our studies of gender, we know that the brains look the same, but they work totally different in men and women. Under stress, women, you want company. Under stress, men want to be alone. So men looks at you when you are stressed, so they say, I'm going to give her some space. He thinks he's doing a good thing. And the woman is like, ah, pendejo. <laughs> you just don't get it. The only time that I needed you and you left. <laughs> when men screw things up, the hardest word for men in any language is, I'm sorry. <laughs> Notice that. I'm sorry. So when two men have this agreement, they don't speak, and finally one says, I'm sorry. <laughs> when a man hears another man, I'm sorry, they say, okay, no problem. <laughs> we'll let it go. You acknowledge you were sorry. But now the man is with a woman, <laughs> and they say their last word that they can say, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I have never seen the conversation end there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're learning the men. What? Yes. <laughs> so with men, the golden rule, I say I'm sorry, it ends there. Diamond rule, when you say I'm sorry, the conversation begins there. <laughs> and it usually goes like this, I'm sorry, and yes. Yes, about what? <laughs> Which is usually a loaded question, beware. 
After 40 years of research, your best answer is, there are so many things. <laughs> yes. Diamond rule. So homework, when you go home, practice diamond rule. I'm going to treat you like you want to be treated. And I want you to pay attention to treat me like I want to be treated. And if you communicate, you can flourish. That's in the West. Last but not least, you go south. You're an elder. No more sun, only the moon. <laughs> we even have the expression, she went south. And that's when you become an elder. Then you don't play the games that younger people play so skillfully, but you still have wisdom in your soul. And in the south, we focus not in love, or learning, or living, but in the L of legacy. Legacy. And every elder gets brightened up when they realize that there are something that they are going to be leaving behind as their legacy. And they see the transcendence in others. I'm about to turn in the equipment, but I'm going to hang out just a little bit more because I need to see my grandson. <laughs> Those are powerful pullers of the people who complete the circle into legacy. So the four L's of culture is to live, to learn, to love, and to leave a legacy. Last but not least, we go into community. And in community, we see the power of we. And there are four key factors in the power of we. They all start with the letter S. First S of community, a song. There is song in community. Every movement, every single appreciation of a community event has been immortalized by art and creativity. So we need the artist for our communities. Song. What is the song of my community? Every community has a song. And sometimes we have seen in the worst places the spirit of freedom flourish. Like the tap that our African American community developed so beautifully in the deep south. Like the gospel songs. Like the song of the corridos in the fields. There is life because there is song. The second one is story. You heal an individual by helping them be at peace with their story. I have a story I can be proud of. In Indian country, we call that narrative medicine. Sometimes what's making you sick is your story. So change it. You are going to leave a whole new story. And you are a community. You have only one story of pain. We are going to sing a new story. And we are going to develop it, all of us together. The third S is the one of synergy. It means I use my energy with you. Because energy is contagious. Feel the people around you right now. Who has the strongest energy right now? Feel them. Check them out. You will notice. Energy translates into presence. You can feel their presence. And just think for a moment, who was the person that loved you the most in your life? Who's the person that loved you the most? Think about them for a moment. I, I have many. Good. Focus on one. And you feel their presence. I feel my abuelita, my grandma. And she turned the equipment many years ago. But I still feel her presence. She has no body, but she has presence. And the tragedy is that there are many people with bodies, but no presence. So homework, when you go back home, 
Make your presence felt. I'm here. The only one who noticed is little doggy. He's celebrating all over the place. The only one with the highest mental health. Sometimes you visit families and the only one who comes out excited is the little doggy. They have presents. Learn from your pet. How many of you have a pet? Yes. Homework. Become a student. Animals have great teaching moments for us. And they will show you the art of presence. Most human beings, they are at risk of getting a heart attack. We know when they happen in America, mostly Monday at 9 in the morning. Your dog, your cat, they don't care if it is Monday. They just care if you are there. So we are going to cultivate the art of presence. So yes, we have story, we have song, we have synergy, the presence that we all share. And last but not least, we have the S of synchronicity. Synchronicity, to align four things in the community. The body, the heart, the mind, and the soul of the community. All of them together. That makes a flourishing community. So my dear friends, we have covered all 20 factors. We have seen the four pillars, consciousness, conduct, culture, and community. We have gone into consciousness with the four Ps. We have gone into conduct. We have gone into culture. And we have gone into community. In community, we spoke about story, and I'm going to close with story. When I was young, I knew that I was going to go out there and heal my entire community. They used to receive money from foundations, so they told me, this year, Roberto, we're going to fight substance abuse. And I went into the community, and I saw a lot of people drinking. So I said, anybody who wants to learn about substance abuse, come Friday from 5 to 6 at the gym. And I made beautiful little flyers with little eagles and culturally correct for my Latino community. And I show up on Friday at 5 o'clock and nobody else showed up. I said, probably Mexican time. I waited for an hour and then nobody shows up. I go out, everybody's out there. Next week, I go, same thing. Third week, I go with my boss and I tell him, this approach is not working. And he told me, that's okay, just keep doing it and document that it's not working. Because if you do good paperwork, we can still get the grant. <laughs> We're so happy to have you, Roberto. <laughs> I know this has never happened to you. <laughs> so I was right there, and it's horrible to do things that don't work. <laughs> because you lose passion and enthusiasm and energy and even hope. So one day I was doing my art therapy, my flyers. <laughs> and my salvation came in the form of a little kid of seven years old. He looked at me with great excitement. What are you doing? And I showed him. And he went, ah, substance abuse. Ah. And I had nothing else to do, so I asked him a question. Well, what would you want? What's your name? He says, Juanito. I said, Juanito, what would you want? And he says, why don't you take us to the mountains and we go skiing like the rich people do? And I said, we don't have that in the budget. <laughs> what else, Juanito? And he told me, why don't we play like John Elway? And I said, yes, but I don't know that football. I know this football. And then he says, what about this? And I said, karate kid. He says, yes. And I told him, oh, I know karate, but it's so hard. 
Okay, like, no, 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 you know karate. He said, yes. And then he says, what can I do? And I said, well, Juanito, I'll be back next week. You get 12 of your friends. Back then in my agency, you could only count a group if you had 12 people. <laughs> so I told Juanito, you get 12 of your friends, and I will teach you karate. And he said, Roberto, no, get in your van and go around and come back in an hour. I'll have 12 people here. No flyers, no nothing, just Juanito. <laughs> the community didn't know me, but they knew Juanito. And when I left in my van I was driving, I noticed in my mirror as I was looking at the traffic, there was a spark in my eyes that had not been there for three weeks. It was the same spark that Juanito had. So my friends, when you lose your spark, somebody else has a spark. Look at those eyes with spark and just spend a little bit of time with them. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. Energy is contagious. And I told myself as I was driving my van, I'm going to go back. And if Juanito is the only one there, I'm going to teach Juanito. And when I arrived in my van, Juanito was there with 42 other kids. <laughs> Don't underestimate the power of Juanito. And I began teaching martial arts, and they were punching there for half an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I said, do you want a break? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, sit down. And they sat down and said, now I'm going to talk to you about substance abuse. <laughs> Cabron. Yes. <laughs> 20 years later, we ran out of funding. <laughs> And I went back to that community, it was a Saturday. And I saw the place where we used to practice martial arts, very clean. And all of a sudden, there in the park, 40 little kids with their karate suits. So proud. Cheap little karate suits, but they are happy. <laughs> what a beautiful thing. And in front of them, this six foot tall teacher, black belt, and then he turns and he's teaching, and I'm like, you know, I used to do this, and he looks at me, this giant, he says, of course I know that, I am Juanito, that was Juanito, <laughs> remember one thing, you don't build programs, you build people, go and build people, thank you so much, muchas gracias, thank you. Gracias. 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 Si se puede.